Hello, and on behalf of Power Street Theater, welcome to Power Talks. My name is Allison Cadena, and I will be your host as we celebrate Women's History Month by, cel uh, by spotlighting some incredible female identifying artists. So today I'd like to welcome our guest, Sonovia. Hey, what's up? <laughs> welcome, welcome. I'm like, I, I'm loving your energy already. Thank this you. Day this morning, but this day has just been flying by. So <laughs> it's already um, leave it. Yeah, I know, I know, and it 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 just it, it flew by. But like, we we got to chit chat a little bit before we started recording, and I'm like, I just know mm -hmm. that this is going to be a great episode. I got to look at some of the work that you do, and so mm -hmm. a lot of exciting things going on that, that I definitely want to ask you about. Before I go into that, though, I want to give people a little bit of background on who you are and why we thought it was an important uh, conversation to have, why we want to soak up some of your energy and, and your knowledge. Um, so to everybody out there, uh, Synovia is a music and movement artist hailing from the one and only Philadelphia. Ooh, ooh. Um, we, uh, excuse me, embracing the spirit of collaboration, she actively seeks to unite and create a communal music space experience. She also hosts in-person movement sessions in the Philly area, which we hope you guys check out, where she is creating community and cultivating joy by way of movement culture. Oh my gosh. Um, yes, yeah, so we're going to ask about that because that was super interesting to me. Um, so I actually, actually, I'm going to go right into that question. Okay. I thought when I read that, I thought it was so interesting, the choice of words um, mm -hmm. movement versus like fitness or mm -hmm. like exercise and in reading about um like kind of the background of it uh you're you say that it's trauma informed mm -hmm. um like it's art. a trauma informed arts yeah. perspective mm -hmm. um so I was hoping you could talk a little bit more about that and like your intention yeah. behind these sessions and like what you hope people are getting out of it yeah so I love movement. Uh, I also love dancing. And some people may ask the question, like, what is the main difference between movement and dancing? And in my opinion, I think dancing is something that's a little more exclusive because a certain group of people have certain, certain skills and capabilities and capacities, quite literally, to be able to, like, do something and be able to, you know, I don't know, like, I'm trying to think of some, uh, some type of routine, right? But movement is something that's accessible and something that's available to almost all, like most people, right? Like there's something you can move, whether or not that's, I can move my fingers, I can wiggle my toes, I can move my head side to side, like I'm able to move some part of my body. So there's this deep connection and a lot of people don't understand the brain body connection. Um, and that's why it's trauma informed, right? So I got my master's of arts in urban studies with a concentration in community arts from Eastern University in 2018. And a lot of my programming was also, was actually done through Build a Bridge International, which is a local uh, arts-based nonprofit, actually, that was founded here in Philadelphia. And they basically teach you how to uh, approach art from a trauma-informed perspective. So when I say trauma-informed, it's thinking with trauma in mind. So thinking with the, fact, the idea that people are experiencing so many different things in their lives. People are experiencing grief. People are experiencing loss. People are experiencing... Um, I don't know, just having literally like mental health issues, things of that nature. So my goal with movement is essentially twofold, really. It's making sure that people can come together in community and feel like they can be their most authentic selves in the way that they authentically move. And then secondly, the big part is just being within community, like overall, like being around other people. It started during the pandemic. So we were in a huge space of isolation then and so essentially I was doing it all on Zoom. So I would have people log in and we'd basically just have like a movement party. And at that point I was calling it movement therapy, but I didn't want to get sued because I'm not a movement therapist. So I changed it to be called come move with me because that's something I would start saying to people. Come move with me, come move with me, come move with me. So that's a kind of long but short synopsis of movement and trauma informed art space perspe perspectives. Yeah, I loved it because in um, some of the marketing materials, it said that like this, it promotes self-esteem and identity mm -hmm. formation and mm -hmm. the idea that this is like a judgment-free community. Because yeah. like mm -hmm. you said, if you think of dance, like I'm not a good dancer and that mm -hmm. might prevent me from like yeah. 
showing up in that way of like, oh, I'm going to come to a dance class. Like, no, I'm terrible. So much it's power in language, right? Like yeah. if you say this is a dance class, then only dancers or people who believe they can dance show up. If you say this is a yoga class, only people who feel comfortable enough to do yoga usually, unless somebody encourages them or influences them to come and try it, those are the people who show up. If you say it's movement, movement, I, I like to say movement is for all. So we all can move. If you can walk, if you can walk in a room, and then like I said, it's, it's an accessibility thing too. So let's say if you're in a wheelchair, right? Like I, my encouragement also is what can you move, right? Can you be connected in the room with moving your fingers? Or can you be connected in the room even by blinking your eyes? Like that being a form of movement and that being a form of being able to be a part of one whole community. Right. I love that. And the idea that it is like like a welcoming community for mm -hmm. all levels yeah. and skill sets and like physical capabilities. Like yeah. that was like super interesting to me. Yeah. Is there anything that... um you were surprised by in that, in those sessions? Like, is there anything that you, I'm sure you expected a certain amount of like, mm -hmm. um, I'm sure you expected something that like, I, I'm sure you expected people to get something out of it. Um, mm -hmm. Is there anything that caught you by surprise when you actually started having the sessions that you didn't really anticipate? Man, that's a great question. Nobody's asked me that. I, and maybe, and this may be tooting my own horn a little bit, but mm -hmm. I actually, was I, like, and I guess maybe it wasn't surprised, but I think I was more so pleased that people, so I always try to make sure that, of course, when we're doing something from a trauma-informed perspective, we're also doing this with measurements in mind. So I'm thinking from a scientific, like data collecting, you know, basis and the importance in when people come in, surveying how they're feeling and then surveying how they feel after. And I always got a consistent, like, you know, if I had to do some type of uh, sheet where I was telling people, this is the result. People always went from here to here. They always went up. They always felt like, I, I felt like I usually hear words that are like, I feel lighter, um, I feel happier, or I feel more energized. So for me, that was always, especially people who are coming in and they're like, oh, I don't really feel like doing this. Like, this is not, you know, but but I showed up, Synovia is my friend or Synovia is someone I support. This looks kind of cool it's the pandemic or it's, I'm doing them in person now at Rec Philly, but like it's, it's these things going on, I guess I'll show up. And then people realize like, oh, and then sometimes the beautiful thing is that people realize something different. They may feel good about the movement, but they may also realize in that moment, actually, I'm kind of tired. Like I didn't realize that like, I haven't, I haven't been in tune with my body enough to realize that like, as soon as I started moving, I was like, oh, I have, I have a, my body's a little achy. I'm a little tired. So there were so, so many beautiful outcomes when it comes to being able to experience movement with other people. Yeah. I love that. And I, I think there's always something, there's always a certain um, gratitude you have when like the work you're doing is like well-received. Like yes. mm -hmm. I'm sure in your mind, you're like, I think people need this, but then to actually have that feedback of like, yeah. oh, yes, I really did. I didn't even realize how much I needed mm -hmm. that. Um, so props to you on that. Um, I do kind of in a similar vein of like, I think a lot of these projects, they come from like, like more of like a personal place. Um, and in your, in your website, you had authenticity shapes identity. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you about that and like how your identity is showing up in the work that you do. Um, and if you have any tips for other artists or just people in general and like how they can really connect to their authenticity and like cultivate that authenticity. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So for me, how I, how I showed up towards the beginning. So my movement process actually started like as a personal process, right? Like I used to move from place to place quite literally. Like I used to, I, I was a vagabond. I used to sleep on couches. I was like, I don't know. I'm Nomadic Novi. That used to be my Instagram name. Like, cause one of my nicknames is Novi. So I was Nomadic Novi. I was moving place to place. And I was like, why do I want to move so much? And then there would be these moments where I just wanted to like express myself fully, like next to a tree or next to like, I wanted to be out in a park. And I literally remember being off Henry Avenue at McMichael Park and saying, okay, I'm going to set my camera up and I'm just going to make it look like I'm recording something. So that way I don't feel weird. Cause we live in a society where like, it's not so weird to like, be like, I'm TikToking, 
but really I just wanted to dance. I just wanted to feel free. I wanted to feel a little hippie-ish, right? Like I wanted to like, and I feel like there are so many people in the world that really want to feel that free, but they feel constricted and constrained by the way that we as adults, especially are supposed to show up in the world. So for me, I've been able to find that youthful, more youthful side of myself. I've been able to find that more joyful side of myself. Um, I've been able to tap into a level of freedom that I think I would not, I would not experience and be able to share with others had I not been sharing a lot of spaces of movement with other people. And also just like being the weirdo that I kind of am, honestly, and, and dancing outside and not caring. Um, so yeah, like that's, that's just, I just, I really, I'm happy that you're asking these questions because I actually thought we were going to focus more on music and I'm happy that we're focusing on movement because movement makes me happy. Um, and then as far as tips and tricks for, for other people, I think I have a shirt that says dance like no one's watching. And I think that that is not just about dancing, right? That is just a practice, a mindset, a mantra. I think for anything that you're doing in life is to strive to do it as if no one is watching because a lot of times we do things a lot different when we're singing in the shower versus when we go to karaoke karaoke versus when we're maybe really in the limelight and we're on a stage and we're being pressured to like do a thing we act differently and my hope and even this is a challenge for myself honestly but my hope is that as much as possible every single day people will be able to show up as authentically as they can because they've practiced it with themselves. So that's probably my biggest tip. Practice it with yourself. Practice it in your, your living room. Practice it in your bathroom, in front of a mirror. What does it look like to be you? And then it's going to be so much easier to do it in, in, in person because you've already practiced it. Yeah, you you mentioned it and that that's what was coming up for me when I read that of like it's so sad that we live in a world where like influencer culture, you know, there's this I, like I think a lot of people feel like we're supposed to look like something yep. or like we're supposed to show up in a certain way with this like kind of mask of, you know, success or happiness or whatever and like the real success and happiness comes with like being yourself and I think especially artists there's like that ad added pressure of like oh, what am I supposed to look like to get ahead in my artistry? Mm -hmm. So it's, to me, it's very uplifting to see somebody who like is specifically calling out, like, let's be ourselves, let's be yeah. authentic. Um, yeah. And you touched on joy in, mm -hmm. in your answer, which is like the perfect segue, because I wanted to ask you about, um, you are, you have a joy journal um, that, mm -hmm. that people can can get on your on your website. And it walks us through weekly intentions, quotes, goal setting, joy tracking. Um, and I found that really exciting because I think we're like coming out of like a hustle culture kind of phase to like people being a lot more intentional in their self-care, their yeah. healing, their own like personal wellness. Um, and so I had wanted to ask you more about um, just your intentions with that joy journal and like your experience yeah. with like being like intentional on um on like pursuing joy yeah so i'm gonna be honest the main point of releasing the joy journal was to release it so i say that because as an artist as a creative as a human being i've second guessed so many ideas and so many things and so many dreams and i have a a plethora of ideas that usually i've made one of ones and i've never shared with anybody so in 2024, one of my main goals was to release a lot of the things that I've already created because they deserve to be released. So that's just the main thing there, okay? Because I, I literally created that in like 2021 or something like that. So here we are, Joy Journal. My whole thing about that is making sure that we capture the moments that one, bring us joy, but also the moments that disrupt or interrupt our joy. So being able to be intentional, right? With everything we think about the top of the new year, a lot of people are doing like vision boards and they're doing all these things to be able to set themselves straight. I think the joy journal is one of the most perfect elements or additions to people setting intentions because a lot of times we're not thinking about our joy. We're thinking about our goals for our business. We're thinking about our goals for I don't know, our jobs, whatever it may be. We're not thinking about like, what do I need to do for myself to be a happier person? Um, and what do I need to track to notice like, oh, when I did this, that actually really kind of frustrated me. Like, or when I didn't speak up in this moment, that actually really frustrated me. I feel like maybe I need to work on speaking up, you know, at work 
or something like that. So that's the idea. Um, and it's also just to remind people to rest because I don't do a good job at rest. So there's like a rest page where it just says rest. So every week there's like rest because I'm listening right now to a book um, on Spotify called Rest is Resistance by Trisha, Trisha Hersey. And uh, she's the founder of the NAP ministry, which I think is so cool. And I've struggled with rest for a long time. And so actually this weekend, I'm planning to like take into account what I've actually written in my joy journal, which is on weekends we rest. So boom, Saturday, I'm doing nothing, which is hard for me, but I am going to do nothing without guilt. I'm going to do nothing. So there we go. <laughs> I love that. And the without guilt is so important. Mm -hmm. So important. Yeah. Um, I we have one last question for mm -hmm. you. Before I get to that, I do want to shout out that you have new music that was recently released and you've got no new music to come in. Yeah. You have new music also coming up. And so I wanted mm -hmm. to give you the chance to kind of um talk about that. Let us know what we can look out for. Yeah. So in 2023, June 16th. I was a headliner at Armour Music Hall and I was able to live record a project called Playlist. So by the time you see this, Playlist should be released. I believe it should be fully released. But for sure, if it's not fully released, there are singles. I really like you. I really love you and learning to let go. So definitely check those out. Stream those. And you can also check me out on Bandcamp. Um, honestly, if people just go to my like link in bio, you can find all the things you need. So there we go. <laughs> Beautiful. Yes. And um, I, I can vouch that, that you have so many things going on. That's why it was like so hard to come up with what are we going to actually focus on in this, in this episode. Um, but, you know, we, we want to ask the, the ladies that are coming on the show um, to wrap it up. What, when do you feel the most powerful? You know, we're here to talk about women's empowerment. What does powerful mean for you? And like, when is it really like resonating? Oh man, when do I feel the most powerful? I like when I get asked questions that I like haven't thought about. It's perfect. I feel the most powerful. Hmm. I wanted to give like this. I'm going to say that. So, and it's kind of like this, this opposite effect, but I think I feel the most powerful when I am my most vulnerable. And that's only because I actually, I think, suck sometimes at vulnerability. So if I am able to tap into that, I do think that's like a version of a superpower um, that I'm able to really, really be that in tune with myself to be honest with me um, and to be honest with people around me. Uh, there's a lot of trauma, a lot of things that I've experienced in my life that most people wouldn't know because they see me as this like, hi, Sonovia, joy, dancing, movement, like that. And which is that. And honesty, right, is a part of my persona as a person, right? That's a part of who I am as well. But there are other parts of me. So I think when I'm able to tap into those more vulnerable parts that maybe are that feel weaker or that feel more sad or that feel more frustrated or feel more anger, that, that feel actual emotion, um, deeper like emotions that I feel like I often bury, that is the most powerful version of myself. I love that. And I'm glad that you said it too, because I think sometimes we powerful can be a mask as well mm -hmm. that people wear. Mm -hmm. And, and so seeing someone else just like own up to like, yeah, I'm actually powerful when I am being my truest, most, mm -hmm. you know, quote, ugly self. Mm -hmm. sometimes. Um, it's, it's really, it's really inspirational. I think a lot of people need to hear that. I don't catch that power to later. I'll be honest. Like in the moment, <laughs> just feeling a little weak, but I catch the power later when like some result comes out of it. Right. When like some, you know, conversation comes out of it. And I'm like, <laughs> Okay, good. Yeah, I feel good. Yeah. Beautiful. And I thank you so much for being vulnerable with us on mm -hmm. this interview. I could go on forever, but um, <laughs> they will cut me off. Um, so I, before we get off, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Um, mm -hmm. Make sure if you're not already following Power Street Theater that you you follow the Instagram or you could also check uh, the website to see what programming they have coming up. But more than that, also, if you're not following Synovia, make sure that you are doing that as well. You can find her on social is at I am Synovia. You can see it on the screen here. And you can also check out her website at <laughs> IamSynovia.com. 